Good morning, everyone. I'm Chris Wood, editor and co-publisher of Biz West, and I'm very pleased to welcome Governor Jared Polis to our Net Zero Cities event this morning. We are so appreciative that he's taken time to join us. Prior to taking office as Colorado's 43rd governor in 2019, he worked as an entrepreneur, education leader, and as representative for Colorado's 2nd Congressional District. Without further ado, please welcome Governor Jared Polis. Governor, good morning. Well, thank you so much, uh, Chris. I, I also want to thank uh, Jeff and, and Biz West Media, of course, Excel Energy, uh, and our uh, amazing leaders at the Colorado Energy Office, Will Tor, uh, Executive Director, and Christine Berg, who uh, works on the partnerships with, with local governments, which are a big part of the solution that we're celebrating here today with uh, Net Zero Cities. I also know there's a lot of elected officials on the line. I want to thank you. Some of you have already committed to the ECLA 150 pledge uh, to cut uh, emissions in half uh, by 2030, zero by 2050. Uh, you know, everyone here on this call uh, is here to learn more, to engage, to really rise to the crisis um, that we face with regards to taking climate action now. Uh, you know, my, my candidacy for governor is very much premised on uh, bold climate action. I When I announced my candidacy for governor in Pueblo, Colorado, I committed to the ambitious goal of 100% renewable energy by 2040, uh, featuring Pueblo, which was the first city in the state to commit to 100% renewable energy uh, as well. And over the past two years, uh, we've been working to uh, combat the impact of climate change by implementing one of the boldest climate agendas in the entire nation. And uh, Colorado at the same time experienced three, three, the three largest wildfires in the history of our entire state. Uh, we have a nearly a statewide drought. And this hotter, drier climate um, is not only a, a danger for fires, but also a threat to our economy as well. Reducing our emissions is more than just a policy priority. It's a moral imperative to address the root cause of climate change, cleaner air, healthier people, and also innovating our way towards a stronger economy with good green jobs here in Colorado, powering the clean energy economy. We have the great opportunity to both spur good job growth, lead the transition to renewables, save consumers money. Uh, and every step of the way, we wanna work sure through uh, ensuring a just transition to make sure that no community in our state is left behind by uh, the opportunities that the, the green energy presents. Uh, our focus is on making progress towards our renewable energy goals. Um, we've, we're very proud that we have secured utility commitments. Over 99% of the utilities in the state will reduce emissions 80% within just nine more years. Uh, we also became the first state in a decade to adopt zero emission vehicle standards. We implemented historic oil and gas legislation, Senate Bill 181. Uh, we supported one of the largest utility investments in transportation electrification. And we also have adopted rules to phase out greenhouse gas super pollutants. Uh, I'm excited that our, our greenhouse gas pollution roadmap puts, has really helped put a comprehensive action plan into motion. Um, cutting uh, GHG pollution in half by 2030, uh, clear actions over the next few years to get there, uh, a strong, bold legislative agenda, including building electrification, uh, a green transportation package that we need to pass to be able to meet these aggressive goals. Uh, and if we can get this through, if we can achieve these legislative victories and get this done, we're well on our way uh, to achieving uh, Colorado's goals and helping to lead the nation with a bold, bold climate action. Uh, we have a very bold 2021 legislative agenda. We're removing uh, emissions from building and gas utilities, funding infrastructure and incentives to zero emission cars and trucks and buses. Uh, it's part of a comprehensive transportation proposal, a budget proposal that protects and doubles down on key environmental priorities, uh, much of which are already represented in the long bill that I hope to be able to sign shortly, including over 70 million for wildfire relief and mitigation, 40 million for clean energy finance programs as part of the state stimulus, 15 million for our just transition effort, 5 million to support local government action on climate. Uh, and we, we, stepped, we set up a program at DOLA to do just that, that's already sent out tens of millions of dollars to help local governments uh, meet climate goals. The Public Utilities Commission, where I've now made um, all three appointments, uh, not at the same time, of course, but um, they'll be evaluating uh, and really digging deep on a number of emission reduction plans, coal plant retirements, 
we see the, I wanna be clear, the 80% reduction by 2030 by utilities as a floor, not a ceiling. So let's lock it in, we're doing that, but let's absolutely explore opportunities to do even better. Um, our greenhouse gas roadmap is the most ambitious and expansive planning document that Colorado has ever produced on climate change. And it, it's ambitious to achieve it with a legislative agenda, a rulemaking agenda across several agencies and all of government approach. And we continue to implement you know, solutions. We've introduced the climate equity framework to help uh, look at issues of racial equity and environmental justice and climate policies adopted by the Air Quality Control Commission. And we released the entire country's first just transition plan to support workers and communities. Both of these are closely connected to the roadmap with our commitment to a Colorado for all. I'm particularly excited about how we center the life and health of all Coloradans, including Coloradans of color and low-income communities. You know, this group here knows best that businesses across fast-growing sectors are a key part of driving environmental progress forward. Last April, the Colorado Energy Office released an updated Colorado Electric Vehicle Plan, which advances our state goals to get 940,000 EVs on the road by 2030 to help meet the goals for the transportation uh, sector reductions, uh, nearly 100% by 2050. I was thrilled to see the Denver voters made the great choice in November to approve ballot measure 2A, which generates about 40 million a year on equity focused climate protection uh, that'll help eliminate greenhouse gases, support climate adaption, grow green energy jobs. Uh, Boulder voters approved a franchise agreement with Excel that builds in emission reduction targets for interim years before 2030, even more aggressive than the statewide commitments that Excel is accountable for. And this kind of progress really supports uh, innovative partnerships with Companies like Colorado-based Fluid Truck, a national truck rental platform that announced an expansion here in Colorado, more good jobs, Lightning Systems, a provider of complete electrification solutions for urban commercial vehicles. By incorporating 600 Lightning electric vehicles into their fleet last year, Fluid Truck now provides an opportunity for Colorado small businesses that rely on safe and efficient transportation to also unlock cost savings and environmentally friendly transportation that helps our state make progress towards our goals. Meeting the demand for cutting edge solutions that build a renewable energies based economy in the future means thinking about energy in a transformative way. When cities and counties work with utilities to adopt their own higher standards for sustainable energy production, our homegrown businesses stand to benefit from clean energy and electrification. We're excited that so many local governments, rural electric co-ops across Colorado are leading the way. This is an opportunity for all of us to reinvigorate our focus on creative solutions to the problems we face. And I'm so glad this work is now finally being reinforced at the federal level. And I welcome President Biden's commitment for the United States to cut greenhouse gas emissions at least 50% by 2030, complementing the previously announced American Jobs Plan, which will lead to significant and much needed infrastructure investment in transitioning to our clean energy economy and we welcome uh, the passage of that to help Colorado achieve its renewable energy goals alongside uh, a comprehensive green transportation package. We're stronger when we can work together. That's true at every level of government, every level of the private sector, every field. And I'm looking forward uh, to watching our progress for better air quality, uh, healthier lives, clean energy jobs, reducing carbon emissions, and we're gonna put these opportunities and these goals really at the fingertips of every Colorado, that we all will benefit from them because we're working together to achieve them. Thank you for your leadership and partnership. And I hope you enjoyed today's session and uh, it's fruitful in helping Colorado uh, lead even more boldly on climate. Thank you.